from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. at home. How you doing? Oh, I love Mondays. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Today's show is dedicated to my perch. The Anderson Dynasty and the crew members and stuff, you've done it again, thank you. I had no idea you'd fix it so fast. And I don't believe that I had gold chairs. I mean, gold legs. I think they were brown at first. Really, are they brand new? Years ago I had brown. That's on the Prince chair. Huh? And so now, anyway, it's beautiful and comfortable. And everything is reinforced with metal. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I am so glad to be here. Yeah. Monday save me. I, I can't live like that over the weekend. You know what I'm saying? Too much food. You know, my friend Jonesy came to town to see me. And then she spent the night. Social distance, but look, we, um, that's on my Instagram, and we went out to two different steakhouses. I, I said, Jones, I've got the plan, and then we can't go to clubs, we're not going to the movies, you know, we'll either sit in the house and just talk and gossip the whole time, or we'll go out. And so we, um, we went to one of the steakhouses, and I showed you the picture on the Instagram, and a lot of you were just like, a plate full of salad and a negligee dripping? <laughs> that's how you do it. Um, but the salad has crabs and all kind of good seafood and blue cheese dressing. It was delicious. I couldn't even finish it, so you know, you always get the doggy bag. And then we went to the second steakhouse. The first one was in Brooklyn. Then we went to the second steakhouse here in Manhattan, and it was just a lovely, all I smelled was men and money. Mm-hmm. And I'm perching, and I got on my negligee, you know how I do. Uh-huh. Switching, little hip I have, switch, switch, switch. <laughs> Hi, boys. <laughs> and a lot of you were asking me, and you keep asking me, uh, what's up with Mike, what's up with Mike? Mike and I will see each other this week. Oh. <laughs> wow. Mike, um, is like he lives in Maryland, I live here. It's, it, you know, because of the virus and everything, you can't do all that traveling. Yeah. You know, you can't. A smart one doesn't. So, but I'm gonna see him this week and he's busy. You know, he, he found this beautiful piece of furniture. Like we talk on the phone all the time. Look at him go. Wow. No, he found it. You know how you throw away furniture, you wait for the garbage man. He found this and brought it home and there he is like staining and varnishing and doing stuff. This, this is beautiful. <laughs> That's probably our big connection is that, first of all, we're both of a particular age and realistic about you know, love or what will happen, what are the possibilities, but also we're both crafters. Mm -hmm. And so all, I've got so much furniture in there and stuff and you know, him you know, and his, his team, you know, fixing up houses and everything. I, that might be corny to you, but not for me, I like it. I got paparazzi this morning. It's like they're waiting. When is she gonna get with him? When is she gonna get with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Two days last week, and then one this week. Mm -hmm. 
That's perfect, though. That sounds amazing. No, but I don't <laughs> want to force this upon him. Right, right. I even called him to say, Mike, I know we said we weren't going to talk about us. I don't want to talk about us either. But, you know, people are asking about you, and I don't want to act like you're dismissed. Even when I go out with a negligee and go, you know, I, I go, I've got a life to live. <laughs> So anyway, oh Mike, Aww. oh, Aww. oh yeah, so cute, so cute, funny, smart, you know. Anyway, um, so last night I did see Real Housewives Halloween in Atlanta. All right, there are a couple of the girls I don't even know, and I don't even want to be involved. Like I just, anyway, but um, Latoya got angry at um, LaToya angered the party host Fallon. Now, I don't know which one is which. Um, I think uh, uh, they put it, LaToya isn't in white, okay. and that's Fallon on the right. Okay, beautiful girls. But look, so Fallon uh, was in insulted by LaToya, and we're at Fallon's house for this. All the girls dressed up, and Fallon dressed as Medusa, and so, and then, just take a look. I'm 31 years of age, and before I became 31, I gave birth to three boys. By three baby daddies? And what someone is not gonna do is come into our empire that we built and be disrespectful to my husband. Keep it in your mouth, bitch! You cannot come to somebody's home and disrespect their home and their husband. Come on, let's go inside. No, 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 no! What was it? You know, the more I see Candy on this show, the more I just authentically, I love her. Like, I love her. And I loved um, um, Cynthia's um, sanitizer costume. Uh -huh. I, I loved them all. I thought that was great, except for Kenya. What were you thinking, dressed as a Native American? And immediately, all the girls um, were saying to her, what are you doing? Why are you dressed like that? She forgot to moisturize her knees. <laughs> Those knees look like they've had a good workout. But you just can't walk around like this anymore. You, know, you, can't, you can't do it. Um, by the way, how was your birthday? You don't look 50 at oh, all. Thank you. And you don't thank act you. 50. I know, thank you, thank and you. And I, I mean that in a good way. Thank you. You know, like you're a responsible wife, responsible mother, you're responsible here at the show, you're a responsible person. Thank you. But you don't act 50 and you don't look 50. Thank you, thank you. I know I was freaked out about turning 50. I was really freaked out. I don't feel 50. No. Now that I'm a day on the other side, I feel so much better and relieved. Well, wait until tomorrow when you, when you wake up. <laughs> oh, creaky. It happens all of a sudden, oh, like, God. oh my gosh, I'm 50, but uh-oh, right. uh-oh. Uh -huh. uh -oh. oh no. Okay. Oh no, but thank so you. So in the meantime, over at the Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Scott said that he had to break up with Sophia Richie, the teenager that he was involved with. <laughs> a 37-year-old man, father of three, still involved with the baby's mom, I insist, uh, Courtney, uh, because she, Sophia, gave him an ultimatum. Ultimatums never work, but take a look. She was like, I don't want to share you as a boyfriend with Courtney and what about me? And Kim and Chloe. And I was like, I totally understand. And I'm happy to work with you if you tell me what you really like want. And then instead of just wanting to work with it, she literally said, with an ultimatum, you have to choose me or Courtney. You should have seen that coming. That's, you know, that's the mentality of a teenager. They don't understand. You're not gonna choose any woman over the mother of your young kids. And it's not about her, them being in love, although I do believe in 10 years they will get back together and be married. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, so Sophia, you, you go along with your life and make sure that you have a boyfriend that is going to be age appropriate to you. Uh, Scott, 
good luck with you and Courtney. Maybe now's not the time, cause you know, she's still involved with Travis Barker, but, um, oh, I know. Mm. <laughs> it's good. Anyway, what else did I do? <gasps> okay, on a scale of one to 10, Aretha last night was a 15. Oh, oh yes, oh yes. I learned a lot about, there's the young lady who played her, and then the, the, um, our friend, um, what's? Courtney B. Van? No, not Courtney, her. Oh, Cynthia Erivo. She yeah. did such a good job. The little girl did a great job. Courtney B. Vance, you all, you all did such a great job. And all I was saying is, oh, it's nine o'clock, I gotta stay up until 11? I got, like I forgot all about it until I got your text. <laughs> Don't forget Aretha. Yeah, it was nine to 11. <sighs> Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah, it's coming on again tonight uh -huh. and tomorrow night and whatnot. And you know, her mother ran away. You know, the, like the last she saw of her mother is when the mother was perched in the window and she'd always do that on Sundays and look outside, look outside, look outside. And the way Aretha was talking about her is a young Aretha, it's a young Aretha in the house. She says, look at my mom, she loves sitting there. It's Sunday, it smells so good here. And, and, and but mom sits in that window, isn't she beautiful? Isn't she wonderful? She's my hero. Like, that's who I want to be when I grow up. Next thing you know, a re young Aretha turns her back to like go to the bathroom or get paper towels or something, comes back in the kitchen, and the mom is nowhere around. Mm -hmm. So she's assuming the mother might have gone to the store or something like that. Mother never came back. Mm -hmm. Then we saw all kinds of, you know, blacks only and whites only signs. And just, you know, you read about. Um, um, life of discrimination. Uh, we still are living it, by the way. But but you read about it, and you know, if you're fortunate like me, and your your dad is 90, and your mom was 86, you hear about it firsthand. But to actually see it play out, and they went back and forth between black and white on the TV, and then colored on the TV. So it was just really moving. I watched. I I laughed and I cried. I used up so many tissues. Uh, you know when you cry good, you're really exhausted. I, I was exhausted watching, and I was hoping that they weren't gonna make me watch until next weekend, you know, like spread it out over the month. So they're doing it right. I had no idea Miss Franklin smoked so much. There was, there was cigarette in every scene. She's smoking, and then smoking again, and then smoking again, and then playing the piano, creating music, and smoking again. I'm like, wow. She used to call the bureau if she had a problem with something that I said. She was a big Wendy watcher. And I can't believe that I actually knew her. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That was a part real. of my tears. Like, oh my gosh, I knew her and she knew me. And a lot of times she didn't like me, but she'd call the bureau and tell me about myself through their phone. Yep. Then we ended up exchanging actual numbers and she'd just call me direct. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And I did watch with one of my hats on. You know, from the Aretha Franklin, yeah. yeah, a real one that she owned but was auctioned. Uh -huh. I ate steak with my fingers from the steak restaurant. <laughs> yeah, with my fingers. It was just a good time. I'm gonna watch again tonight, but that means that I will miss Love and Hip Hop. How can you miss Love and Hip Hop? I know, but uh -uh. this is history right there. I know. Like, <laughs> I have to know stuff. I'm thinking about, and I got black eyed peas in my office for breakfast and cabbage. <laughs> and Jones is like, mmm, all right. Well, this is better than going out and socializing. I just said, just roll your shoulders back because we are two single women out here. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Mmm, you don't understand. I was really shocked to hear that Gary Owen and, and his wife, uh, Kenya, are divorcing. That produced a couple of tears. Uh -huh. Married 17 years, three grown kids. Uh, now Gary is 46 and the youngest is 17, I believe. Uh, 16, yeah. 16. So there's no word on why they broke up. But 17 years is a really good run, especially, I mean, in any life, but especially in Hollywood life, you know? Him flying around, telling jokes and stuff. I'll never forget the first time I met him, you know, he was um, in Think Like a Man 1. 
And I, and Joelle reminded me of this too this morning. Every time he used to come here to our show, I would always say, if I wasn't married, if he wasn't married, that's my kind of guy. You know, like tall enough to handle me and fluffy enough to understand, let's go out for good food. Look, look at that. And, and funny in a corny, cool way, but, but grown. I don't know what he's doing now, but it is never too early to jump back in the game. And <laughs> yeah. Cause you'll find that when you get divorced later on in life, I don't know about you, but I don't want anything going, like I'm back in the game immediately, immediately. And then the virus happened. So I had to slow down. It's okay. <laughs> Did you have a nice weekend? It was cool. It was all right. It was just all right. <laughs> Saw my nephew. That was great. It was great. So you had a nice weekend. Yeah. It, was it only right. takes like one major activity to make the whole weekend good. Because after Jones left, I was like, I'm not moving. I don't even remember walking her to the elevator. I think I just said, slam the door. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so uh, Sweetie and um, uh, Quavo are broken up after dating for three years. Now the word is that he took back the Bentley that he gifted her. I don't know whether that is true or not. You know, people inside of his camp are saying it's not true, but he spent over $2 million in gifts for her, you know, and she posted, she's single and he cheated. It sounds about right. Well, Quavo posted that he, cause he looked, cause she posted first. And then I guess he was saying to himself, okay, this is how we're gonna play this out. Okay, so he posted that he was disappointed. Uh, she put their business out there. And she says, or he said, she's not the woman uh, that he thought she was. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Anyway, Quavo says that he was upset about Sweetie when she went on Justin Combs' a podcast. It's a talk show, yeah. Yeah, it's a talk show, okay. So what are they, we well they were flirting together, but who doesn't flirt? You know, bat your eyes, pluck, the, pluck your strap off. <laughs> doesn't mean you don't love the man that you're with. You know, it just means that you are alive and well. Yeah. There's a story that I'm going to avoid. We didn't even talk about it in the bureau meeting. You know, Kirk Franklin and his son. Oh, I don't know. I don't oh. know. All yeah. I'm saying is I'm very sad. Yeah, very yeah. sad. Yeah. If it's true. Okay. Well, this is what is true. There's a father who was arrested after carrying his two-year-old uh, daughter um, into the elephant exhibit at the San Diego Zoo. Now, Cynthia? Cynthia? <laughs> Cynthia? I love you a lot, but you're still a dangerous animal. <laughs> So take a look at them. He had to cross over boulders, fences, and one of them uh, fences was reported to be electrical, you know? But he went in there. He wanted to take a selfie. He wanted to take a selfie. He's got his two-year-old daughter. Just take a look. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Dropped his daughter like you're on your own. I can make another. How stupid.
stupid is that? Like, people are, I, I, st I blame this on the virus. I blame a lot on the virus. I, the virus has made people just, like maybe he would be a more responsible father if he could take his daughter to the zoo whenever he wants. I don't, look, but dad is 25 and he was charged with uh, uh, child cruelty. All right, no, we're not finished. You know, Monday's all hot topics. Rob Shooter is here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And we've got more great show for you.